Hey, what's up guys? Sumo11 here. Welcome to the top 10 summer anime of 2015. I love making videos like this. I watched a lot of anime for the summer 2015 season. Probably the most I've ever watched. And um, it actually exceeds the number 10. So I can finally make a proper list because in previous videos I could have had around 10 or below 10. So... Um, there might have been a little bit of lying in the title, but now I have enough anime to make a proper video. And I'll also be including many reviews in the video and the source material for all of these anime. I watched 12 shows overall, if I'm correct. And before I start, I wanted to say that these ratings aren't perfect. I'll try to explain my thoughts, but all of the anime on the list are great in my opinion, and you should watch them. This is a, my personal opinion, so if you disagree, please leave a comment. And with that out of the way, let's begin. <clears throat> Plot twist, there's 11. So, number 11, God Eater. God Eater is a video game that got turned into an anime. The main character is an anime original character. And apparently the main story is pretty short, so I'm guessing um, in the video game... Most of what you're doing is missions, and then maybe you'll get a little bit of plot here and there. It ended with nine episodes, and the rest will be shown for the winter 2016 anime season. Uh, we follow our main character, Linka, who joins the God Eaters, and they use huge weapons called God Arcs, and it seems similar to Monster Hunter. They had to take out these creatures called Aragami, who have destroyed most of the world, and... I actually switched this around on the list a few times. This is going to be higher on the list, but then I thought about it. Because when I first started watching this, I wasn't really into it. Um, I was also kind of tired, so I don't know if that had, that had an effect on my watching of the show. But I did fall asleep on a few of the episodes for the show. And the good episodes for the show came later on. But the beginning wasn't too amazing for me. And I think when you're doing a list like this, you have to think about it like that. Like, the last few episodes of God Eater could have been great, but if I didn't enjoy the beginning, it shouldn't be, like, super high on the list. It shouldn't be, like, top five or something like that. Um, once the real fight begins, it gets more interesting, but I can't rank something high for getting interesting just in its last few episodes. There are four episodes of God Eater left, and the source material for God Eater is a video game. So, yeah, check out God Eater. Number 10, Dragon Ball Super. What the heck? How is the great Dragon Ball series so low on the list? Well, for a few reasons. Dragon Ball Super is a new anime series based on the new movies that came out. It's almost a new age of Dragon Ball with the Kira Toriyama being heavily involved with Battle of Gods and Resurrection of F, you know, being involved with those movies. And while Battle of Gods introduced some interesting plot points, it wasn't that great of a movie. You can check out my review if you'd like to know more, if you've uh, seen the movie. I think it's a spoiler review. I'm not, I'm not too sure. I don't remember. Um, this anime series drags out the movies, and I don't get why. Because the thing with the movies and the TV show is just like... It's, there's something wrong there. Because Battle of Gods... It did seem a little bit weird pacing-wise with Goku just getting a new form in the movies. And this one actually turns out to be canon. Because he does get new forms in the movies and stuff, but it's not not as big. Um, the God form is very big. You know, the Super Saiyan God thing that's canon, that's um, huge and everything. And the movie, the movie did need more content. But compared to the anime series, the movie is perfect. The movies are dragged out in the anime series. Filler is added. The fights are too long, and then some of them are too short. Settings, plot points, and etc. are changed for the anime series. And it's still a fun ride, but the occasional filler is annoying. The long fights get boring after a while. It's just like, just end the fight. This fight's been going on for like five or six episodes. And you could be like, oh, they did that in Dragon Ball Z, but it doesn't work here. It doesn't work here because Beerus doesn't even feel like a villain. Beerus feels like a friend. But when the fight's going on, they're, they're joking around and stuff. Um, with Frieza, with Cell, with Majin Buu, they feel like enemies. Beerus feels like a friend. He feels like part of the Dragon Ball family. It's weird. Um, and to turn this into an actual actual like plot canon thing, it doesn't work because the concept 
isn't fit for a long story. It could be longer, it could have more detail, but it's not fit for a super long fight. It's not fit for more plot points and all that. And I don't really know how to do Battle of Gods right, but in every iteration of Battle of Gods, it's not done right. That's that's really all I have to say about that. Um, it's almost like Dragon Ball. the Dragon Ball series has lost its charm. I'm not sure how much Akira Toriyama is involved, but... He needs to be writing all of this. A problem I had with this in Battle of Gods is that they introduce enemies that seem way too strong for our heroes. Also, there's the concept of other universes when they barely have explored their own. Dragon Ball Super's getting 100 episodes, and they're able to, they're able to do filler, so I'm sure they're going to finish this arc somehow, but... I can't imagine it being that detailed, like them going to all these different universes and that's and all that stuff, if they were still able to do filler. And, uh, let me see. I'd like to see other characters step up besides Goku and Vegeta, and the animation of the anime is also bad at various points. The source material is movies, and it's anime original, kind of. There's a manga too, but it's way too fast-paced, like fights are finishing in one chapter, um, the movie is just right, the anime is too slow, and the manga is too fast. It's like, uh, what is it, Goldilocks and the Three Bears? Yeah. <laughs> um, I wish the series was up there with Dragon Ball Z Kai, which I loved. It's one of my favorite animes alongside Black Lagoon, Durara, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Fooly Cooly, and others. And, excuse me, I sound congested. The fights were intense, but they could also joke around during the fights, and Super is just okay right now. And I probably spent most of the video talking about Dragon Ball Super. <laughs> um, number 9, Overlord. A basic description of the plot. A video game a video game service or whatever, it's about to end. A player is spending his last moments within the game alone. And he gets trapped in the game. And it becomes real. This anime was very popular. And why is it so low? Well, because I'm smarter than everyone. Of course. No, no, that's a, that, that's a joke. Um, not really. Anyways, the main character is overpowered. He's very overpowered. And people hate on Sword Art Online because Kirito seems overpowered, but they'll love the heck out of this show. And I know he needs to, needs to get out of the game, but I was watching it like, what is the point of this action? Like, why is he doing this? He's trapped in a video game. He's literally playing a video game. I feel no sense of danger for him. And... Maybe the short season wasn't enough to get into the plot, but, like, I don't know. It didn't seem right to me. The source material is a light novel, and, uh, if you, if you can't notice, this is actually going to be the, this is actually going to be, like, number 10 or number 11, like, the first one on the list, but, um, yeah, I put Dragon Ball Super and God Eater under it. Number 8, Snow White with the Red Hair, and I didn't put the Japanese name because I didn't want to type that. No, this is not Disney's version or anything like that. People will always be like, I saw the Disney movie, so I should know this. Nope, you don't know this. This is about a girl with red hair, and that's different because I don't think we, uh, we've we seen anyone else with it in, like till this point, and it's kind of her defining feature. It's something that a lot of the characters bring up, her having red hair and all that. And I don't, I'm not sure how this relates to Snow White. Like There are references to Snow White in the first episode, but... Other than that, um, I remember, I haven't read Snow White, but I think I saw a video or something on it, and apparently, like, the original story was, like, very dark, so, I don't think they're, they're gonna get into that, but I don't know, like, how much of this is, like, actually based off of Snow White, and I don't know why it's called that. This is a romance story, you know? It's slow, but I love it for that, and I'm glad this wasn't rushed because the development feels real. I don't want to give away too much, but she ends up meeting a boy that changes her life. And there are fights in it right now, but it doesn't really seem like the series will take a drastic, violent turn. It really gets into the, what the characters think, into their backstories and all that, you know, how they got into the situation, and I like that. Season 2 comes out next year, so I don't have to read the manga, which is awesome, and the source material is a manga, of course. So moving on to number 7, we have... Aruharu X Kikanju, and I probably said that incorrectly, but um, I think it's also called Aruharu X Machine Gun. And this one is weird and funny. 
It's about a girl who looks like a boy who joins an airsoft gun team that only allows guys. Confused yet? Having the main character look like a boy makes for interesting jokes, but there's also a gay undertone with some of the characters, and it's because of that, but it's also because of other reasons. Um, it's, just some, it's just some things that they do, and this series is probably for females or something. I don't know if it's a... Uh, I don't think if it would it be considered a shoujo? I don't know, but I, I feel like the demographic is for women, basically, but it, it still is entertaining. Um... It's just some of the weird situations, like, uh, like for example, there was one character who wanted to be, like, harmed by another character, and, um, not harmed, or, like, he wanted to be, like, yelled at by another character. It was kind of weird. It's not a problem, but it's kind of uncomfortable at times, depending on how far they take it. Especially in the last episode, like, what are you supposed to think about that? If you, uh, if you've seen the last episode, it's just, like, I don't know. I don't know about that. Because that's a weird thing to put in there. <laughs> you could actually take that to a really serious level and just think about that. And it's just like, what's wrong with this guy? What have you done to him? And this is a sports series and the fights are entertaining. From the first episode, we get an interesting battle and these cool fights continue throughout the show. Their goal is to become the best in Japan. It's a fun series with good comedy. And I, don't, I like that it's not rushed because... Um, it seems like it's going at a normal pace and stuff. Some sports series, it's like, oh, we've had this fight. Oh, we've had this fight. All right, we won the tournament somehow. You know, I like that it's short and stuff. It's short. It's not too fast. Um, and I would like to see more from it. I can't really... Uh, let me see... Yeah, I can't really continue the series, though, because the source material is a manga, but the manga is extremely t hard to find. I'm not really sure on how this even got an anime, because I couldn't find the manga online. So, I mean, you can kind of judge interest um, based on how many fans reading online and stuff, but, like, this is not that popular online. Like, I don't even, I don't even think it's, like, most of it's not even translated, and there's, like, a lot of volumes out, so I, I don't know. Um, I guess we'll have to wait on a season two if we even get one. There's a 13th episode on the upcoming DVD, and it could be the next episode plot-wise or an OVA. I'm not sure. This one was actually a little bit higher on the list, but then I switched it around. Number six, Ushio Totora. I love Ushio Totora because it has the classic 90 shonen feel, and it is a classic 90 shonen. The basic plot is that a boy has to work with the monster to defeat yokai. And I've heard that most of this is most of the series is monster of the week. So basically, most of it's just him fighting um, various monsters and stuff. The studio who animated this said that they were willing to adapt everything, but the creator himself told them to cut out some material, which I really don't like. And I was kind of ranting about that before. Um, it's best to just adapt all of it, slow paced or not. I mean, you had an OVA before. That's not covering everything. Why Why would you not want an anime series covering everything? Like, people aren't going to buy the manga. This is an old manga. I doubt someone's going to be like, yeah, give me that Ushio Tora manga. I mean, if it's in the anime, people are going to watch the anime. And, um, if, like me, creator-wise, I would like a faithful adaptation of my story out there, um... I think that would be cool because not everyone's going to read a manga. The art style of the manga is kind of old. They updated. It's it's old in the anime too, but it's updated a little bit. You know, it's detailed and stuff. So, um, I would, if I was a creator, I'd like to have a faithful adaptation of my story out there. Um, you know, just for years to come. I feel like more people will check out an anime series rather than a manga. The story only has sev seven major arcs despite being over 300 chapters. Over 300 chapters, anime-wise, would mean over 100 episodes. And I like it, but the Monster of the Week stuff is boring at times because I don't know which one is forwarding the plot and which one isn't. So I'm guessing, like, he cut out the ones that didn't matter or that will be explained later or that, like, aren't ex important to the story or whatever. And, um, yeah, because Ushio... In one episode, he has, like, a monk following him around. It's not even in the anime, but it's in the manga. He has a a monk following him around. And, like, the monk, like, I think he always gets up, ends up getting hurt or something. And 
eventually they do fight, but he loses, and that wasn't included, but the monk was also shown in the anime, so I don't know. Um, I've read some of the manga, and I wanted to do that alongside the anime, but I fell off, because I, w I wanted to like compare and contrast with this guy on YouTube, but um, the reviewer stopped reviewing it, and then the fan, I don't know where the fan went, so we don't really talk about that anymore. But I would have liked to, like, discuss the manga. Did I just say the same word twice? I would have liked to discuss the manga with him um, weekly as the episodes came out. That would have been fun. The dynamic between Ushio and Tora is pretty funny. It's still ongoing as an anime series, so we shall see how it goes. The source material is a manga, and I believe Ushio to Tora will be around 39 episodes. I'm not really sure how you can cover seven major arcs, but then again, I've been told that the main story is very short. Alright, we are finally down to the top 10. Who do you think made it? Number 5, Rampo Keton Game of Lapis. This show had a great start, and I thought it was going to be random mysteries, but nope. The plot is all connected. We follow our main character, well, kind of. You'll know what I'm talking about later on, or if you've watched the anime, but... It seems like our main character is Koba, Koba, Kobayashi, a boy who looks like a girl. And these characters are conf so confusing this season. You know, we had Tachibana from um, Aharu, Aruharu X Kikanju, and we have Kobayashi, or Kobayashi. I thought it was Yoshi, but like the, uh, the article I read said Yashi, I, I don't know. Um, and these characters, you know, they're very confusing this season. Kobo, Koboyashi, he works for Akechi, and they solve cases. Um, it's pretty interesting. It has some nice plot twists. And there's a cool thing where the animation changes. You know, the animation of the characters changes based on how the characters see and perceive other people. The ending of the anime is a little bit weird, but for the most part, I enjoyed it. It's based on the works of an author by the name of Ed, Edgoa Rampo. And this anime was made to honor him because I believe he died like 50 years ago or something like that. Um, it's at the 50th anniversary of his death. So, yeah, you got that. Number four, Charlotte. Honestly, I looked forward to watching this show a lot. Probably um, more than most of the shows on this, this list. It had great content. There were plot twists and the silliness made it extremely enjoyable. Um, the first few episodes follow the main character, uh, follow the main characters as they find students with powers. All the students have powers which disappear once they get older. Um, I believe it's once they become adults or once they reach a certain age or something like that. And our main character comes off as a villain, really. That's, that's interesting, you know, it's nice. He does, um, he does change some, some with the plot and everything, but, yeah. I'm not really sure how much I can give about Charlotte, because Charlotte... Plot-wise, it starts off pretty good. It gets interesting, very interesting, and then it's kind of random. So I think that's a proper way of describing Charlotte. Charlotte should be higher, and it was higher originally, but I put it right here due to the final episodes. Um, some of the plot points were weird. They came out of nowhere, and it, I don't mean that in a good way. You know, it wasn't it wasn't good. It could have been better. The last two or three episodes could have been like a whole arc as it involved a lot of exploration, you know, it could have been, this could have been more. I wouldn't be like, oh, a 60 episode arc, it could have been like a 10 or 11, 12 episode arc, that would have been good. And Charlotte was a good anime, it was a great anime in fact, but it had way more potential and it didn't live up to that potential and it just comes off as a strange anime. It's an anime original and I think some might consider this to be the disappoint disappointment of the season because it started off so well. But yeah, those are my thoughts on Charlotte. Number three, Gangsta. Gangsta is pretty cool. I read the manga after I finished the anime. It follows Nicholas, Warwick, and Alex as they do their jobs as handymen. And the city they live in is filled with humans called Twilights who have special powers. But they are disliked by many and even killed for their powers. So, um... Um, I guess you kind of got, like, the, you could, like, make it a race thing, really, um, or discrimination, yeah, something like that, and, um, 
Nicholas, Nicholas is just awesome. And you can see that in the first few episodes. Um, it reminds me of Black Lagoon with the supernatural powers and everything. But Nicholas is just a great character. Um, I would say he's definitely one of my favorite characters from the show. I like his fights. Um, I like his character and everything. And, I mean, you'll just learn more about him if you've, uh, you've watched the show. I think Warwick is pretty interesting. But, um, I don't know. I, they're both the main character, but I don't... I always feel like there's, like, a main, main character. And I feel like Warwick would be the main character, but I feel like Nicholas gets more focus at points. I don't, I don't know. Uh, yeah, so it, it does remind me of Black Lagoon with supernatural powers. But they don't really leave the city. They leave the city a lot in Black Lagoon. Like, Black Lagoon's normally in other countries and stuff. This is right in the city. I mean, it's just there. They don't really leave. And all of the characters have backstories in one way or another, which is good. The focus does switch away from the main characters to the side characters at points. And I really love when shows do that. Like, as I watched one of the episodes, I asked myself, did the main characters even appear in this episode? And they didn't, which is cool. I mean, if the side characters can hold the story for that long, I think that's pretty awesome. A few chapters and comedy gags are skipped, but overall it's a faithful adaptation. It also has great action, but the story, I don't really know where the story is going. It's a monthly manga, so there isn't much content. And with four or five episodes, they probably would have caught up to the manga. This more, the source material is a manga. Number two, Durara. I think it's Durara X10 or something like that. Durara X10 Part 2. Something like that. This is the next part in Durara Season 2. And what can I say without giving away anything? More characters are introduced, like always. Some of the old cast is starting to change and be more involved with the activities of the city. It gets violent. Like, some some of the cast gets hurt badly. And it's people that you wouldn't really expect to get beat up. More backstory is given. And we are nearing the end of part two of... Um, nearing the end of part one of Dura Ra overall. You know, of the entire series. And the next part of the anime should end off part one of Dura Ra. There's a second series of novels of Durara ongoing at the moment. Um, I'm not going to say too much about that. I haven't really read it, but I did discover it when I was on the wiki. And the problem I have with this anime is that there are too many characters, and it's confusing to remember who's who. Uh, it's confusing to remember who's who and who knows who. It's, I mean, it's an interesting storytelling technique. I like the way he does it. But then again, you're making it confusing on purpose. Like, you don't have to do this. You really don't have to do this. Do you like torturing people or something like that? But now, the creator's cool. You can tweet him on Twitter, actually. I have uh, I told him a few times, probably twice, that I really like Durara. He does respond. I think he does some tweets in English, too, so he probably speaks English. So you guys can chat with him if you want. Um, random characters are introduced that are actually important. I normally judge, like, who's important based off of the endings and the openings, but some of these characters aren't in the endings and openings, and they're actually important to the plot, so, yeah. Uh, Izaya and Mikado get a lot of focus this season. Apparently the posters do reflect, like, who gets focus during the season, so, yeah, these characters are heavily focused on, um, throughout the series, or throughout the season. And the source material is a light novel. Based on what fans have said, it seems like the show would be better if they adapted everything from the light novel. Uh, they don't do that with the series for some reason. I'm not really sure how long the anime would be, but it would probably be um, much longer if they did adapt everything. It's time for number one. Unprofessional drum roll, please. Number one is Roka no Yusha. Roka, Braves of the Six Flowers, starts off as an adventure with heroes known as the Braves uniting and trying to take out the Demon God. The ma that is the main plot point, but there's a problem that they have to handle before they do that. There's too many of them. There's a seventh Brave, and we spend the first season trying to figure out who this is. I thought this series was okay at first. Um, I thought the main character was kind of a jerk because of how he joins into the tournament, and then he ends up using, like, that is his fighting style, but it's kind of underhanded, it's kind of dirty, it's, it's okay with, like, the, the, um, non-human enemies and stuff, but, like, you're, you're using this on people, like, you're gonna hurt someone, um, with the spikes and everything, um, I don't think that one guy was wearing shoes, I think he almost, he might have messed up someone, he messed up someone's arm or something, like, in that tournament or whatever, so, yeah, I, I didn't really... I kind of just lost all respect for the main character. What was it like within the, the first or second episode? 
And, um, as I said, I thought the series was okay at first, but as soon as they spent a whole episode doing a discussion based on who the seventh was or trying to figure out who the seventh was, I fell in love with it. This is my number one anime of the season, easily. It destroys all of these other animes with an awesome story. The main character, Arlet, is the strongest man in the world, and don't you forget it. When the anime started off, he was, tr he was really annoying. He was super annoying. He's that confident main character who brags about his abilities, but there's a reason as to why he does that. And by the end of the anime series, let's just say he's got my respect. He is a pretty awesome main character. He's very smart. Like, I don't want to give away too much about his character, but this dude's very smart. And I like having a smart main character because a lot of, I don't know if you would consider the shonen or not, or not. It's more of a mystery series, but a lot of shonen series have dumb main characters. This guy is far from dumb. Seriously, though, someone should make a video on how many times he says he's the strongest man in the world from episode 1 till episode 12. And this anime, apparently, it didn't do too well in Japan. Many fans dropped it due to due to them not, you know, not doing anything with the Demon God, really, in this season. Um, I guess it was, like, when they, at the point where they, like, stopped at this location, they had a discussion, and the season, the rest of the season was spent there. Those fans are stupid, because stories are meant to take their time, and a lot of fans, I wouldn't even call them fans, call them haters, they're... They're, um, they want series to be rushed for some reason. You know, they don't want a slow-paced series. They want the series to get right to the Demon God within 12 episodes or something like that. And according to the light novel readers, this is a very well-done adaptation. So that's awesome. I also like the love interest as well. It was unexpected, and, I mean, it's cool. In 12 episodes, most of the characters have gotten great development. I won't say all of them because there's, like, one or two that don't have the best development, but everyone else has a little bit of development. We learn more about them and stuff. They took their time, and most, if not all of this, was the in the first volume, and there's many volumes, so that's cool. You know, if one volume takes, like, 12 episodes, I think that's great. The animation is great, the fights are good, and they think while they're fighting, you know, there's a lot of thought into this, and I really can't praise it enough, you know. I would say please support it by the DVDs. I want a season two. No, I need a season two. Well, that's my list of the top ten anime, and that took over, what, like 20 minutes? Oh, uh, wait, no, it's at 30. Might be at 30 something, I'm not sure. And, um, it took quite a few revisions to make this list, but this is the final product. All the animes on this list are enjoyable, and I think you should watch them. I also watched Chaos Dragon, but that was terrible, and I should have dropped it after episode two like everyone else. What was on your list? Did, did I miss any anime? What animes from this season did you like? What animes are you watching in the current season? Ah, questions. I love questions. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to follow me, my Facebook and Twitter are below. I'm Sermo11, and I'll see you guys later. Peace. Later. Peace.